Hello guys, today we're tackling how to design a very colorful poster for a musical concert. Alright, and as usual, we'll be starting off from a clean slate. We add some things to the background. We add more information to the background. We'll add some more info like the date and the name. We'll drop in our vectors, vectors we'll be creating ourselves. And we'll add our model in there. we drop in the name of the model. We add the finishing touches and we are done. So basically, today's tutorial is going to focus on two softwares, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Illustrator for the illustrations like the speaker and some few things, and Photoshop to put these elements together and finish it up. Alright, let's get into it. Alright guys, so we are starting off in Adobe Illustrator and we already have our color set, alright? So we are going to select the shape to and then we would um, draw a rectangle now we are moving over to object up there yes file edit object then we select offset path and then offset the path all right so you can choose whatever thickness you want but 0 0.10 inches is, is good enough for me so i'm going to do that but it's all in your hands whichever thickness you think is okay for you, you can't do that let's click on okay now the offset and then the shape we did, we did is of the same color. So let's select the offset and then pick a color from the colors we've already set up there. Alright, so this is fine. Now what we are going to do is to make sure we we don't have it in a group, right? So it's not in a group, right? So let's that's fine. If it's in a group, you just ungroup it. Now let's select this and then Control C to copy, Control B to paste in the back. These are the shortcut keys. If you are not comfortable with that or you are not convinced with the shortcut keys, just move over to edit. Alright, so when you get to edit, edit, you have all the options there. Control X, X or Command X to cut. Control C to copy. Control F and B to paste front or back respectively. So you can do that. Let's make sure we've not already done a duplicate of this. So yes, this is just a single step. Control X, Control Z to undo. Now Control C to copy and Control B to paste in the back. And I'm going to use a Shift and the navigation key. So I'm press press and hold the Shift key and use the navigation key to move it away. All right, to not nudge it away. How far you want it to go it depends on how thick you want the speaker to look. All right, so I'm going to select the two, this and the other one, and I'm going to move over to Object. Right, then we we'll go to blend, then we click on make. So the software would make duplicates of the two or layers you selected. It's trying to blend them together. Alright, so it's going to make duplicates to blend them together. Now this is all we have, but we want it to look more solid, right? So we'll go over there again. Then we select blend this time back. We'll go to blend options, then we'll move over to specify steps. Now watch as we do it. Alright, so like I mentioned, you want to make sure it's on specified steps and just key in the number amount of steps you want to have. Click on enter, you realize they already filled it up, so it now looks solid. But when we zoom in, you see it's not too perfect because there are some yeah, that's it. Alright, so how solid you want it to be depends on how much steps you want to put in there. But this is fine. So we'll move over to effect, sorry to object and then expand. Then you want to just expand both objects and fill. So you just click on OK and you are done. Now, every one of these things are outlines or shapes that can be edited individually. So, if you want to do that, you can ungroup them, but we don't want to. So, we just move over to Unite and we unite all of them or merge all layers as one. Yes, so you can see it's now just one as we move it away. And then you want to undo so that it's back in the position. And the next thing I'm going to do is to kind of round the edges of the inner shape. All right, so select this and use the direct select tool, or just select it, and you'll realize the knots appear. Then you want to drag the knots towards the center to get the round shape. So let's observe. Alright, so this should be fine and uh, we would move on to do other things of the uh, of the speaker. But if you 
want it to big, you can do it big, but this is fine. So, like 0.2 is okay, 0.3 is okay. Alright, so let's try and create the other element of the speaker. So this is the box of the speakers. So we want to create the speakers or the sound system itself in the in the speaker. So we are going to use the ellipse shape. Alright, so let's select that and draw shapes. Then we are going to go about almost the same process we did with the speaker when we're doing the offsets and all of that. So let's pay attention and then we come back to that. So you draw your ellipse, you move over to object, all right? Let's pick this color first. All right, so let's move over to object, path, offset path, and then we choose how deep we want it to be. So let's just hit on OK. All right. Now, like this, we just move the dark one to the end, and then we are going to make duplicates of this so to form the kind of ripple effect you see with these sound systems, right? So let's copy, select both, put them in a group, all right? Or group them, and then Control C to copy, Control F to paste in front. Then we would scale it to meet but if you can see the group it's on the side of the layer panel all right so control c to copy and control f to paste in front we want to make as many couples as possible and i think this should be fine all right so the next thing will be to draw another ellipse shape that is bigger than all this so put it in a group or put this element in a group mm -hmm. and then we'll create the shape as we mentioned earlier right click arrange take back so the other ones will show in front All right draw the shape carefully right so we are edging towards the center like this right so this should be fine right so if you pay attention to it carefully you'll see that the knots will appear and when you drag it away from the points it will create this look but I think we missed one anchor point. So what we have to do is to control Z to undo. Yes, we missed this point. So control Z to undo. And now let's make sure we've selected all. Make sure you don't select the anchor point outside the house. The curving would at all. Yeah, the rounding of the points will affect everything. But this is fine. And this is good enough. All right. Yeah, you can choose to manipulate them as you want, the edges, so that it looks more like a stretched um, paper or, a, sorry, a stretched rubber or any elastic material. Alright, so with the effect we use for the speaker, you can actually use that for something else. So let's do a quick one on this, on how to use that effect we used. That is the offset part. So control N to bring out the, this dialog here. You create the shape you are looking at or the size of the canvas you are looking at. Let's type out, type out a word like vintage and then we are going to try and create this retro 
font effect style. So look closely and pay attention. Alright, so let's create an outline from this text. So right click, create outline. So now this becomes shapes that can be edited. Alright, so select all of that and then you want to unite them as one shape. Alright, so they are already in a group. So let's just click on unite pathfinder. If you can't find your pathfinder, go to windows and you'd find it in there. Alright, so let's move to object um, offset path like we did in the other side. So offset path and then click on ok if the offset size is ok for you but let's try and get a proper size all right so with the offset part created you want to right click and on group now let's select the inner one which is original select some, well, some of them are separated those who are not the elements that were not joined were separated. So select all and unite. Alright, so these have been merged. We want to do the same for the one behind. So let's change the color of the one in front so we can see clearly the one behind. Now let's make sure we've selected all like we did for the one in front and then unite them as one element. Now you want to select the one behind, alright, Control B to copy, Control C to copy, Control B to paste behind, then you want to use the shift and the navigation keys to move it away, alright, to the depth you want to see, alright, how thick do you want it to be, how three, how thick do you want the 3D illusion to be, select the one in front and the one behind, object, of uh, blend make blend and then it's filled up all right because of the number of steps we have in there but let's blend and then increase the blend steps let's push it up to uh, let's say to let's say 50 or 100 click on ok so we have it filled up Right, so once again you move over to object expand expand object and fill okay then you want to unite them so it becomes one shape and that's one easy way to create this 3d illusion of the text in adobe illustrator Alright, so now let's move over to Photoshop and create our canvas. Alright, so this is one. Uh, this is the dimensions we are trying to do work with. So let's just move straight into it. Alright, to start with, let's pick our colors and then drop them in Photoshop. These will guide us with the kind of colors we are going to use. So let's hit to activate it in there. Alright, so we can hide it right after this all right so we just drop in our in our colors like this and then we are going to select the shape tool all right so rectangular shape tool and then create our first shape then we'll pick a color from there so what along and practice so let's drag this below so we can have our color showing I pick the first color which is the yellow color okay then we would control j to duplicate this layer control t to bring a transform and then we would rescale it this way all right so hit enter to activate it then you want to select the direct select tool and then select 
this anchor point right here and then drag it down you can press the shift key to have it move in the right pixel all right so this is fine we want to change this color from this very one to that color hit ok and the basics of the background is already done so let's watch along and get it done so we are going to go into our project files then we are going to select this image right here to create an effect in the background all right so now let's drop it here right push it up a little or you can turn it around whichever side work looks good for you let's try to fit and uh, i don't like the dark edges all right so we are going to apply color valley so double click on the side like that then the layer star panel will pop up we add a color overlay select this and change it to white all right so this is fine we are going to duplicate this and trap drag it down drag it down so ctrl g all right to duplicate this and then we will drag it downwards or you can hold the alt key click and drag to duplicate this should be okay all right so this is our model right here in a blue background right so we've already selected it out for the sake of speed and time all right so if you want to know how to do this there's a link up there you can click on this to watch how to crop out images from background so let's turn this off and turn this on you if you pay attention you see that we still have the detail of the hair in there without necessarily cutting those sharp edges out all right so this is it and then we also had some effect on the image which let's take a look at it so first of all you add you posterize it this is what it does for you on the image right so watch along and uh, practice so you now add a threshold and this is what it does so you want to change the blend mode for the threshold to multiply for example all right so you can adjust the levels but one to eight is i think okay all right so let's move back here change the blend mode from normal to say multiply all right but if it doesn't suit you can change it and then you can also touch the opacity just to have it appear the way you want so let's go through some blend modes and see which one works better let's add some levels to it too all right so you can just play along with the effects and you see which one works the levels obviously doesn't work so we delete it and then we would go for curves and see what happens with this so we touch on the highlights and the shadows and see how it turns out all right so this this is probably some effect you can add to it just to tweak it up a little all right so this is the before and after the effects right. but we already have this here so i'm going to drag this and drop inside our project so let's move convert to a smart object first then i'll move it to the art book we are working with so move to then drag and drop all right so now with the help of the pen tool we can actually apply a stroke to this picture and it would it would look awkward so with the help of the pen tool we are going to draw out uh, an outline to the image and it will appear in in a way that makes the image stand out a little better from the background so let's just look along and follow Alright, with this done, we are now going to drag our element and drop. The difference between this and this is because we added a pink stroke here. That gives it a 
make give makes it look nicer but it's actually the same all right so let's drag and drop it here so then we are going to now fill our background with some vector elements and that will make the artwork look better all right so let's do this and follow along Uh, to make the speaker stand out better, I'm going to add a stroke. So double click on the right side of the layer, add a stroke and we are going to choose a stroke color of white. Right, and then we would click on OK, right click somewhere in the effect panel, right there, right click. Then you want to select create layer, right, so the stroke will be a different layer from the vector. Then we are going to adjust it so it's look the way we want it to look so just look and follow along so right now we're dragging and dropping this element in there we want to create the title of the event Alright, so with this, we want to create a strong uh, drawdown shadow. And to do that, right click on the right side of the layer, click on drop down shadow, reduce the size to zero, and then just adjust the direction of the shadow to the effect you want. Alright, so just take a look at this and then do it in a way that suits the work you're working on. Alright, with the text here, I'm going to use convert them to a shape. Right click on the side, convert to a shape. Then I can use the direct select tool to manipulate the text as I please. Alright. So let's watch and follow along. So first convert to a smart or uh, convert to a shape, sorry. Then use the direct direct select tool to select sides of the text and you can move them around to have some kind of effect like this all right
Okay, so there we go. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope it was very helpful. If it was, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed to this channel. And if you have any question, kindly leave that in the comment section and I'll respond.